Hello, and welcome to Inverticast. I, of course, am Leah. You guys know me from the YouTube channel, Tarantulia. And I also have Simon. Uh, you guys know Simon from his YouTube channel, The Mantis Garden. Hello, Simon. Hello, Leah. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking all about snails. Um, which in scientific terms are actually called gastropods. Um, and snails themselves, the ones with shells, are called shelled gastropods. Or, or, and at least that's the family that they're in. Uh, and they're also called mol molluscus. Mollusk. Right, so they're in the... Molluscus, and then you've got your, your, your separate snail species, or genera, and then species. So, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So I did a bunch of research on snails um, and gastropods, and this is a genus that includes snails, slugs, and there was one oh sea snails. So they they're they're all kind of lumped into this one little family, um, but their phylum that they belong to, the mollusca. Um, actually also includes octopus, uh, squids, uh, clams, cuttlefish, and uh, slugs. I believe starfish as well. Uh, yes, I think, yeah, I can, yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah, uh, yeah, molluscus, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Um, gastropods are really old. They've been traced all the way back to the Cambrian period about 500 million years ago. So these guys are like even older than um, <laughs> like beetles and yeah, yeah, and me. <laughs> and okay, so their shells are made of a hard structure that like it's a hard structure that over time as the snail grows, the shell grows. Um, and it's made of calcium carbonate, and it basically just kind of piles on to the already existing ca calcium carbonate over time as the snail gets bigger and all of that. So 80% of all mollusks are <coughs> gastropods, and there are about 85,000 to 150,000 species of mollusks, um, and so 60,000 of those are snails. That's a huge, that's a big number. That's pretty big. No, nobody actually, nobody actually knows to say there's between uh, 60 and 110,000 ish. Uh, right. So well, because there's, there's, there's so many that we haven't found or that we still find in the found some this year. So that tells you yeah. how many more it could be out there. I mean, <laughs> it's like the Amazon rainforest where we, we've not even touched really. Uh, oh, know, absolutely. Like, Depths of the ocean, of yeah, I mean, we've only explored. Uh, I believe I read an article that said five percent of the ocean. We've only we've only explored, or really know, five percent of the oceans here on Earth. So that leaves ninety five percent of the oceans untouched, meaning that there's probably a bunch of snails and slugs down there. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, no, no, if you you you. Go right ahead. No, I was just going to say, I was just in saying, hopefully the Loch Ness Monster as well, but there you go, it does not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't know. It, I, it could very well exist. And from pictures that I've seen, I, they're pretty convincing. So I don't know. Loch Ness might be real. <laughs> Alrighty, so, excuse me. Um, land snails are really versatile they pretty much live or land snails and sea snails are incredibly versatile they can live in any environment um, pretty much any place in the world you will find snails um i found that snails range in size so they don't they're not really limited in their size as far as that goes they, they can be itty bitty teeny tiny little microscopic things or really big foot long two pound giant snails um and that's that's both terrestrial and sea snails like they are both very 
large and very small. <laughs> Obviously, it's like sea snails right. are. Sorry. Go ahead. The, the lightest snail is actually a sea snail, which is the Australian trumpet snail. That, that, that can weigh, I think it's about 17, 18 kilograms. Which wow. Which is going to be 40 pounds, something like that. There's wow. Quite, quite a weighty, quite a weighty beast, really, when you think about it. And you can have a, you know, a cat can sleep inside that. So that's yeah. a snail. Yeah. That's what amazing. That's a pretty good sized snail for sure. So I also read on snailworld.com that there are races because snails are famously really slow. Um, they don't, they actually only move about 0.5 to 0.7 inches in an hour per second. So that's, that's very, very slow, obviously. Um, so Simon, I wanted to prick your brain about that or pick your brain about this a little bit. Uh, are, are there actual snail races? Have you seen these? Yes, it is a British thing. We, uh, we, we do, um, garden snail racing and, uh, last year, I think it was the world record for the speed was broken by a snail. Uh, oh, wow. They, they, they. Generally, a garden snail will move about one centimeter per second, which is quite fast, really. Uh, and this, <laughs> this guy managed an inch per second, so he, he, he nailed it. it it's it's wow. not as slow as you can imagine. Um, I've seen them where they do it on like a dartboard type, uh, you know, a, a circle. And the idea is to, to get to the, the, I think it's get to the end. Yeah, it's get to the end, get to the edge first. Uh -huh. right the center it's you know put them in the center and it's the one that gets to the edge first is the winner and we do have a couple of uh world champions well, like your world series where nobody else joins in uh it's you know, <laughs> the world championship where it's it's just us really it's just us being sad <laughs> I, I'm... so yeah we do have snail racing um it, it's that's just, amazing it's just a fun day out, but it's, uh, you know, anybody could enter. You've got kids entering and all sorts. There's no way there training the snails with little weights or anything. You just go and find a snail and put it on the thing and see who wins. So it's just are, it's basically a, a fun day out. Um, are snails super food motivated? So can you, like, just put some food, you know, at the end of the race and hopefully they, they come and get the food? Or how does it work? Well, generally, just keep, they just move. They just go anyway. They don't have food. Um, okay. Uh, as you mentioned, food, though, I mean, like this one won't let go of this piece of cucumber. It's loving it, actually. Uh, That's so, amazing. Uh, what species do you have there? Uh, we're not sure about this species. This is actually a, a it, it is an African land snail. Uh, oh. I do not know because it was a, a, a rescue. Oh. So uh, there, there, was, there was two of them. Um, I'm gonna have to wait till it gets to full size. Sure. Let's see if we can identify it. But uh, yeah, it's 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 one of them. It's one of them. I've got several land snails here, seven African land snails, uh, <laughs> and and none of them, to be honest with you, I, I think we know the actual species of until they get older, because these was all pretty much rescues, uh, donations, or people just saying oh, i've had enough of this do you want this i was like what is it and they go i don't know so we've ended up with quite quite a few snails that we don't know what they are yet wow uh, okay yeah what we may but uh my wife uh actually looks after the snails which i think is a big improvement yeah because uh she, she's she's not british so uh they tend to eat them Maybe. rather than <laughs> rather than Yes, uh, especially sea snails. Sea snails tend to be uh, more of a, a food item around the world than, than the land snails, but there are some land snails that get eaten. Um, yeah, I did read about that. <laughs> you, can, you can actually buy these these guys. You can actually buy in tins. Oh, wow. On, on the European continent. But, but like, sorry, when we say continent, we mean uh not a part of britain like just the continent as in oh not yeah 
Yeah, that's generally <laughs> that makes sense. We always say the continent. I saw this in a video the other day, and somebody mentioned it was, it was an American reviewing a, a British thing. And when he mentioned the continent, we meant the rest of Europe. Uh, and, and it confused the hell out of this American. So <laughs> yeah. Because when we, we think of continents, we think of the actual, you yeah. know, Europe, Asia, Africa, like. <laughs> yeah, it's like you've got Spain, yeah, I've got a, I've got a holiday on the, the continent. In Europe. So that's, <laughs> this is a, this is a, a, a baby of the one I've just had in my hand. I don't even think you can see it so tiny. There's oh, wow. That, much smaller than that. Evidently, she's telling me I've got to lift my hand up. I can't see the screen, so. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. She's, 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 yeah. She okay. looks, she's so cute. She's so small. I love that. But yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I need you on for your up in slime. So there, there's a good cue for you to mention yep. the slime. Yeah, there we go. All right. So the mucus that they, they secrete. Um, actually has a use. I always wondered this. I wondered what, what the snail trail is. Um, and so that mucus actually helps it move along the surface, whatever that it's like crawling along. Um, it helps to protect the soft underbelly of the snail, essentially. So it basically provides a mucus layer between the snail itself and the and whatever it's crawling over. So if there's sharp rocks or pointy sticks or anything like that, uh, they are not going to get into the snail's skin, if you will, and like injure the snail itself. Um, and the mucus again also helps protect it against infections. Um, I also posed a question for myself uh, because I've been seeing a huge trend in uh, beauty products all around the world that snail mucus is uh, like an anti-aging, anti-wrinkle um, properties or like it has those properties and so a lot of beauty products are using snail mucus in their products and I had to know if this was like actually legitimate. So I did a little research and I found on the myoclinic.org uh, that snail mucus is actually good for your skin. You heard it here first on Inverticast. It is legit. So uh, the reason that it is so beneficial to your skin is because it contains antimicrobials and it also has hydrating properties, but it also has that antioxidant uh, properties in it as well. And those are what is said to help uh, kind of like smooth out wrinkles and get rid of those uh, dark spots and blemish correcting and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, what uh, what an amazing find. Like, I was honestly super shocked to find that those, the, the beauty products with snail mucus in them are legit. Like, they will help you uh, look younger and have much more pretty skin, if you will. Um, <laughs> so I was very, like, what are your thoughts on that, Simon? Because I thought it was really just like a gimmick, you know? Well, no, it's actually, there's actually complete snail farms dedicated and devoted to this, this thing. Whereas you, 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 you'll get the snails, you'll feed them with a, a, a high um, water intake, like cucumber and lettuce, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and then you'll get them to slime. <laughs> they collect the slime, <laughs> uh, like they put them on a mesh thing, and the slime drips down. I'm sure it's disgusting. Uh, drips down into a tray, and that's what we use, and give to everybody to put on their face. So you know, yeah, I, I think it's pretty gross, but it, it it does work. I've read quite a lot of papers on this. I should yeah. have written, uh, I've written a book on snails, and so I had to, you know, you can't just write a book uh, guessing. So I asked, right. <laughs> I asked to do a lot of research on it, and and one of the things the research was was the the properties of the 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 slight the, the snail mucus. Yeah, uh, and you know it's a thing. It, it it really does work. They proved it in the lab conditions. So yeah, you know it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, because I'm worth it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, maybe maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> but so that's uh, there also um, there are also studies showing that the snail mucus is beneficial in the medical field as well. Um, they use it to help heal wounds as well as prevent infections after a surgery. So there are definitely uh, medical uses for snail mucus, which is, um, you know, I, I honestly believe that the earth provides pretty much anything and everything that we could possibly need. Even, even with all of our like technological and medical advances, um, I still think that mother nature is like pretty much the end all be all when it comes to, um, our health and well being. So having that respect for like nature and kind of our environment is, is a huge, huge deal for me. Cause I, I love that. Um, so, and snails are living proof that, you know, Hey, <laughs> our mucus makes you younger or at least look younger. Um, I could do yeah. I've got a cucumber in it. It's holding on, again, over on so I don't even see that. Yeah, yeah, no, we could, that's oh, awesome. The <laughs> life there doesn't want to let go. They absolutely love cucumber. Um, I don't know why. Amazing. There's nothing in it. It's not good for them. But it's not bad for them either. Um, well, cucumber is really uh, hydro. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Very hydrating uh, item. But yeah, yeah. You, could, you could do both. You could put the, the cucumber eye patches on there and uh, have the benefit of the snail sliming you at the same time, I suppose. Sure. Spas. I can't imagine some woman sat there and the white face, you know, mud pack or whatever it is you put on your faces. I don't know. I'm a proper uh -huh. old man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on each eye like this. Doesn't it? Might might work. Might be working better than the uh that whatever that stuff is you put on your face. I think a mask, is it you call it? Yeah, like, well, there's so many different kinds. There's masks, there's, you know, hydrating cream, moisturizers, stuff like that. Okay, um, okay. You can stop <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty in depth, you know. <laughs> about that sort of thing. It's like, you know, it's, it's uh, you look terrifying again, darling. You know, that sort of thing. It's, <laughs> right. <laughs> At the end of the day, just wipe it off the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> No, I I love that you have snails, and I I know that. Do you you have um, African land snails? Yeah, the giant African land snails. Yeah, there's one in my hand. Yeah, awesome. they're absolutely so, beautiful. So it's not actually albino; it's too cystic. But there you go. And people call things albino these days when they're white, and it's it's not. It's leucistic. Leucistic, uh, yeah. Okay. You know, not essentially this. the the absence of like reds and um, yeah. black, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, yeah, that's one of them. Not the biggest ones we've got, but you know, it's one of the cutest. So it was going on video. Definitely. So I, <laughs> and I, it, actually, I hope this does work because I'm going to have really young fingers later. So. Yeah, I hope it does. I it does work. It it's does. Slimed. I mean, you should just you know. It's slimed me. So, so. <laughs> it is very slimy. I'm not like a huge no, fan of slimy no. things, you know. So I I've never tried the snail, uh, anti aging mucus serums for myself. Uh, but now my interest is absolutely peaked, and because I do have a couple little crow's feet happening, you know, I'm getting older. Uh, but let's go ahead yeah. and talk about, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's talk about some sea snails because I found a ton of information on sea snails and it comes, come to find out that sea, sea snails, um, are seen as a biomarker for like concert, uh, conservationists and, and biologists all around the world. So they believe that the presence of a certain species of snail can indicate the presence of heavy metal pollutants in the oceans or the sea or in like a freshwater lake even. Um, so what it means to be a biomarker, it is essentially 
that they are a biological marker. So it's two words that kind of got clumped together, and it's a scientific term that means that uh, it's something that can be measured to detect a state of condition of the environment or an organism. Because obviously as human beings, we also have biomarkers in our bodies, one of those being our heartbeat. So you can hear the heartbeat, you can measure it, you can, you know, take a calculation how many beats per minute. And it, you know, uh, certain sounds from the heartbeat and possibly even how many beats per minute you have is a biomarker for the state of your heart, like how it's doing, how if it's working too hard or if maybe you just got done doing like 30 jumping jacks or something. So maybe you're you're at a elevated state of uh, breathing and, and heart, your heart rate needs to be higher so that you can get more oxygen to the muscles, right? Um, so it's kind of the same idea as for the ocean. So biomarkers are kind of the same idea. So an abundance of a certain species of snail in one area of the world or one area of the ocean can be a biomarker that says, okay, we've got a lot of a huge presence of either algae or heavy metals or things like this. And that's why all these snails are here. So it's really fascinating because they are learning that snails can be um, used to essentially like detect heavy metal pollution or metal pollution, especially with mercury. Um, so they're finding that snails are really, really sensitive to mercury. Is this something that you knew of, or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. One of, one of the uh, markers that they do use, uh, the shell mm. of a snail, is built up by things that they intake. So you, you've got your calcium uh, carbonate is what your, your shell is made up of. And that's made up from things they eat which can be plant materials, can be scraping on rocks, all sorts of things to get this calcium carbonate. Yeah. There was some studies uh, regarding pollution on terrestrial snails. It was actually the grove snail, I think it was, or the striped snail, brown striped snail. Um, mm. And what they did is test the shell because the shell builds up over time. Right. So they can actually test what kind of the, the, the pollution was actually going into the shell from what oh, was wow. building the shell up and it was finding things like cadmium in there and mercury in the inside the actual makeup of the shell so that wow. can tell us whether an area how, how polluted an area is or if it's getting better over time if it's getting worse just by testing the shell because obviously the snail lives over a period of time it's eating right you, you can have a shell uh that's that's completely different or has a problem with lead uh well maybe not now i don't know if it's in america but we don't have lead anymore but like oh it's a problem <laughs> vegetation where uh, it's a built-up area with the cars for instance like the mm -hmm. snails are eating vegetation they're getting uh lead in, in in the shells and all sorts of other things like matter cars which is loads and loads of different things matter cars it's absolutely awful um, but yeah, they were, using them as a, a biomarker is one of the, the really important things about snails because it is the amount of time it takes to build up the shell and the different layers on the shell. You can actually do like you can with a tree in the rings. By sure, yeah. Layers, you know when the pollution is going up and down so you can even gauge the time of year, whether it's more polluted in winter or more polluted in summer. summer. Just be, just by testing the snail shell, which I think That's, is amazing. They also found I was the gonna... uh, brown lips, uh, brown lit snail. Really hard work to say that actually. Um, brown <laughs> snail uh -huh. was changing its color, actually changing its color uh, in built-up areas. It was it was losing the brownness, if you like. It was it was turning yellow more oh. often than not in, in cities. But it was in rural settings because of pollution. So you know, it wow. tells you you're doing something wrong. So yeah, we, we're we're not behaving at all. 
I was also good. gonna. I was also going to. Sorry about that. Uh, I was gonna mention the the tree rings because, um, yeah, that's definitely another one of those biomarkers. So that's pretty fascinating that snails are biomarkers pretty much all through, you know, terrestrial and the oceans and seas. So, good. Wow. <laughs> really good information, Simon. Thank you. Um, so some species, so speaking of what snails eat, um, most, I believe most male, snails actually eat uh, like plants and algae, so they're herbivores, but there are also carnivorous species of snail. Um, and some snails even eat other snails. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> Um, but they also go ahead. I have to say, the rugby wolf snail is there's one in uh, a wine that was introduced into a wine, and it's it's decimated the actual oh. wine population of unique snails because it's an island. Obviously, it is a lot of the snail species there are quite unique, and they're, they're actually becoming endangered because of a snail that's eating them. Which is wow. scary. Yeah. And that's how I thought was again. <laughs> yeah, no, scary. most certainly. Yeah. <laughs> I know that, uh, so speaking of invasive snails, the I did a bit of research on the giant African land snail, um, and they actually have been found to be one of the biggest invasive species in the entire world. So yeah. they originated obviously in Africa, but um, they have basically propagated to like Japan, pretty much all of it, like all co a whole bunch of parts of Asia, pretty much everywhere in the world. Now you can find African giant land snails um, just because of, you know, human intervention and that kind of thing. We just kind of introduced the species to all these different continents that they don't really belong, but they are truly a testament to the versatility and just like the, the ability, ability to adapt to completely different uh, environments to like their native ones. So the, the African land snail not only has been introduced to, uh, you know, climates that it's not used to, but they thrive <laughs> and they become kind of a problem here or in some places, a lot of places for, you know, farmers and their crops because they do eat plants. Um, and they have actually costed the agriculture industry. I believe it said like 20 million a year. Yeah. Let me look. Let me look. Yeah. Cause they, <laughs> yeah. Let's that's, see. That's, that's, that's generally not the, the, the land sale, it's, it's the, uh, the garden sale, the European garden sale. Yeah, right. Which we, got, which we got from Northern Africa. So, you know, we can blame the Romans if you want to go back that far. <laughs> well, I like to eat it. So they, you know, they used to, uh, I, we've, we've got some snails in the UK, well, uh -huh. actually, England, that that were brought over by the Romans that don't belong here at all. I uh, believe it, yeah. You know, 2,000 years later, we, we've got snails running around that we shouldn't have. <laughs> but, I mean, there are benefits to snails as far as, like, garden, like, in your garden and stuff. There are benefits for them. Um, anywhere they go, essentially, they leave that mucus trail. You know, that's, that's just all snails do that. Um, but they also help to like refresh the soil. So they replenish the nitrogen and the phosphates in, in the soil, which is actually good for plants. So in essence, you know, some, a, a lot of snails, they can do a lot of damage, but they also do a lot of good. So it's kind of weird. Like it's, it's almost like they cancel themselves out. It, yeah. It is. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I mean, they're, they're out there um, eating dead vegetation, uh, dying vegetation. They prefer that. They prefer the dead vegetation mm -hmm. to the vegetation. 
So you've got something rotting away. You prefer to eat the rotting away squid, because it's easier to eat. It's as simple as that. That's why you yeah. eat things like seedlings when you plant new plants out and your seedlings have got a nice fresh green leaves coming on. I know they demolish them because they're easy to eat. But when you yeah, well, them, they're not super huge and established as a plant, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the that's problem. Again, humans get upset about that because there are little seedlings. We want to install pretty flowers. Of uh, course. Snails come along and grow. They're just, you know, you're going to put them there. You're basically putting things on a plate for them. Yeah, they're dead. <laughs> right. Now, right. plant them. You know, they won't touch things that are, that are already established. They're yeah. quite happy to eat the dead things that fall off it. And I they, found another. Yeah, uh, um, I found another really fascinating tidbit of information about snails is that they don't have ears. So they no. they don't hear at all. That is not even a sense that they register. Um, no. But they do have olfactory, so, you know, a sense of smell and taste. Yep, yeah. exactly. All the front there, the, the face downwards are their, basically their nose. Uh-huh. And the ones on the top, actually uh, don't bother looking at cartoons because they always put them here. But right <laughs> on the end is where their eyes are. Oh, if you can even call them eyes, to be honest with uh, you. So, so their yeah. eyes are on their antenna? Right on the end of the antenna is the, uh, it's more of a, a light detector than an eye. Okay. So they can sort of see where it's dark, where it's light. They can yeah. register movements uh, by shadows. Uh, the, they can feel vibration. So oh, yeah. That good. So, you, you know, you bang on the table. If you've got it on the table, it'll retract quickly. And that's okay. simply feels the vibration. It thinks, what's going on? I better get in the house. Uh, and that's, that's, that's why it does that. But no, it can't hear it. It has no ear canal. No uh, brain function for it. For, Hearing at all, and, you know, right? That's another one. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Sea snails are also really fascinating as far as their anatomy goes because they have um, gills. Mm -hmm. So instead of breathing oxygen like we do, and land snails obviously have lungs and they breathe. Uh, well, they have kind of a per se. Look. Go ahead. I know you know what you know what they have. <laughs> They, they have a, a single lung. That's okay. Like, you know, like if you've got two of everything, they've got, like, they're just happy with one. So they only have the, 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 the one lung. Uh, maybe, if I get lucky, I'll be able to show you where it is. Oh, cool. Because you can see it from... Uh, you can't see it on this one, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, you can't, no. But generally... I'll show you where it should be. It's because it's got a great big piece of cucumber and I can't pull it off it. I don't want to damage the skin. Oh, jeez. But under under this sort of area here, there's okay. a little hole. You've probably seen it when you picked up a snail that there's a little a little hole that looks like an ear, like deep, dark hole. And, and that is where the air goes in into the lungs. So it's not over here. It's not happening here. It's happening here. So it's more, it's closer to their face. No, no, I say it's not happening here. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, happening, it's happening more under the shell here. It's, uh... it's like uh, a little arrow comes out and it, it's, you can normally see it really well, but this one's got a great big piece of cucumber right in front of where the... <laughs> so I show you, unfortunately, I, I was hoping that I could but it grabbed the cucumber as I picked it up, so I have look. But yeah, that's that's the, the the singular thing that snail anatomy is so weird. It's very it's fascinating. So, they, they, they are so strange. They've got because we expect we look at mammals and we expect everything to have like two eyes, nose, but you know, now couple of legs, like, you, know. you know. Yeah, they've got one of these, two of these, you know. Snails just break all the rules. They just go, no, nope, no. Nope. I don't need they to. They do. They stand. really do. <laughs> I mean, generally here, this is where this is where the lung goes. This is where it breathes from. So it 
Uh -huh. All the eating business and seeing and smelling business goes on up here. But mm -hmm. down here, it's where it breathes. It's like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. They even they even break all the rules of gender because uh snails are hermaphroditic meaning they have both genders so instead of just one snail being a female one snail being a male they are both <laughs> if if you saw that and i i actually had the um the pleasure of filming it several times of, of snails mating uh -huh. and, and and watching them mate is so confusing. It can take quite a while. <laughs> Circling each other and, and and then this is the weird part. Out the side of their head. Uh -huh. right, what part of their head? This is where their genitals are. Not where you what? Then, this is where their genitals are. No. Right above <laughs> them, this gets even Weird, yeah, no, nobody, nobody would expect that. That is really something. <laughs> How I funny! They've got something called a dart pouch. Uh -huh. and they actually, they don't only create the the shell out of calcium carbonate; they create little darts that look like terrifying little knives. And they have a dart pouch here above the genitals, and they fire the knives at their partner. Oh wow! <laughs> what a trip! And if you if you saw that and you film it and you watch it, it's like, whoa, what just happened? You know, and, it's, and all of a sudden it's got this, it's got like a thing sticking out of it, a great big like knife, if you like. Yeah, uh, it's uh, to to encourage their sperm, if you will. It's so pretty fascinating. Uh, that is another. Uh, that is definitely another thing that I, I read that, yeah, even though snails are hermaphroditic, uh, they still prefer to essentially mate like the old, the old fashioned way, quote unquote. Um, so yeah, one, you know, one snail will take on the female and then the other snail takes on the male. And so they, they do do their thing in old fashioned style, um, even though they can, they can reproduce without without mating at all so that's pretty pretty interesting yeah it is, they are, they are a, a, a extremely fascinating animal that, that everybody knows about the snail but nobody knows anything about snails right <laughs> right that's what i found in in my experience and talk to people like you know oh what do you do oh i do this do that i've got some snails i keep them as pets and I think yeah snails What's good about snails? And then you can tell them all these wonderful, interesting facts about snails, and they always walk yeah. away with them. Oh, I didn't know that. Every single time, there's so much people don't know about this tiny little gastropod we have, and now yeah. in the garden, and they're just fantastic creatures. They're so, everywhere. Yeah. They're so cool. Excite me so much. That's really yeah, fun. right. <laughs> I'm I'm actually very excited about this because I learned so much about snails that you know just as you said you know everybody knows that there are snails that they exist they're around but nobody knows anything about snails and so uh i did enough research to where i i'm certainly not an expert on snails but i feel like i have a lot more knowledge than i did before especially with sea snails and kind of how they absorb oxygen uh, through their gills, they ha and their gill isn't where you would think it would be. Like on fish, it's like right below their head, you know, uh, and that's kind of where we would assume that a sea snail's gills would be. But no, they're actually under, like right under their tail and under their shell. So, like, if you were to lift up their shell, there's a little, um, there's a little like opening there that's protected also by a little flap and so that's i forget what it's called but it's essentially how they absorb oxygen and uh breathe underwater <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's actually in the same place as the um as, as the lung hole shall we call uh. it a lung hole there's a new one for you we'll, we'll call it a lung hole and it's in the same place as it is on a terrestrial scale uh, okay, good, good. Yeah, they started in the, in the water and then crawled out into land and they just go, oh, I don't need 
that bit anymore, but they'll keep it for breathing through. I right. Like isopods. I mean, isopods have done the same thing, haven't they? Yeah, because, because they are, well, they're crustaceans, aren't they? Well, yeah, I suppose crustaceans, they have, they have gills, or mm -hmm. a kind of gill, they have pleopogal gills. But when you think about it, you can see, if you look at ice pod, you can see how it's come out of the water and changed and adapted to breathe the air. And it's, I should imagine the same thing's happening with the snails, of course. Right. Um, Absolutely. I mean, they, they are just incredibly adaptive and uh, versatile. So that's some pretty interesting stuff. I still, I just honestly, I can't get over the uh, anti-aging stuff that that turned out to be a real thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. Snails also have kind of a long lifespan. So in the wild, typically uh, snails can live like five to seven years or so. Uh, but obviously in captivity, they can live a lot longer, so about 10 to 15 years, um, which is really, really cool because, I'm, again, it's due to their uh, adaptive nature. So they can be found all over the world. They live a long time, and they do have benefits to your soil. So before you remove those snails that you think are eating your plants, think about that, that you know, you'll have better plants in the future because they're replacing those nitros and nit or nitro yeah <laughs> and the phosphorus nitrates yeah 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 <laughs> the things well. that yeah. plants like to eat <laughs> that sounds better yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. but no spells spells are just absolutely fantastic things i mean yeah thousands of years ago we was eating them did, did you know that the first animal that humans ever heard in was the snail. No, I didn't know and, that. Yeah, and the oldest one ever was found in Wales, which was a, a stone thing, and it found loads of uh, snail shells where they actually kept them to, to grow on, to, to, to become free. Wow, yeah. So, yeah. That was the first animal that we ever corralled, if you like. Not the <laughs> can you? No, but yeah, you, you corral the snails uh, for, for consumption. It's huh. weird. It's weird that it's here that the oldest one they found was, and yet we find eating snails repulsive now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I definitely escargot. I'm not a big fan. I've never, I, I've never tried escargot, and I don't think I would. Because they just don't sound appealing to me. I well, don't know. <laughs> I, I've watched my wife eating when we've been in Portugal and that, and she's I, a great bowl of of, of snails. I should have. I, oh, it's disgusting. No, it's yeah. It's I not, can't do it. <laughs> it's not nice the barbecue ones do all sorts. Like I said, they, they, they have the large ones, but I mean they have tiny ones as well. Mm. So you just eat them all. I. I, I I couldn't do that. I mean, wow. Liliana, she it's said cool. they taste good. They taste good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, 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 I don't care how good they taste. I don't want one. No chance. I agree, Simon. I absolutely agree. I hate to say it, but it's a texture thing for me. You know, like a lot of people have textural issues with things that we eat and put into our mouths and I know people who can't they just can't eat tapioca because of the texture of tapioca like the little chunks I know people who can't you know they won't they don't like to eat bananas for the same reason that texture to them is just new um <laughs> so for me it's the slimy factor uh. hi shady how are you we're coming up on the end here in a minute, um, but I also wanted to talk about one last snail species that I was actually really fascinated to find information about, um, but it's called the Rocky Mountain Snail. So a snail that lives here in my hometown of Colorado. Um, and so they are common all through the Rocky Mountain Range in North America, so that it extends all the way up into Canada and all the way down through I believe 
parts of Arizona and Texas. So some of the Rocky Mountains go through there, although they're not quite as tall, if you will. Um, but in any case, uh, they are common all around, but they're only one of 40 species or varieties that are native to Colorado. So we have 40 uh, varieties of snails that live in Colorado. Um, and they have sinistral shells. And this is the most fascinating thing that I found, is that they have sinistral shells, meaning that their shells actually coil counterclockwise. Um, if they were to coil clockwise, then they would be dextral shells. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's they're important to our ecosystem here in Colorado because they help clean up the fallen leaf matter. And, again, they replenish that soil with the nitrogens and phosphates. Um, so uh, the things that I didn't know even about my own little state uh, and the the snails and the wild snails that live here uh, and yeah so it was pretty pretty interesting that I found that uh, their shells here in Colorado are counterclockwise so they coil counterclockwise um, I believe I also read on the same website which was uh, snailworld.com that uh, the altitude and environment can actually affect which way the snail shell coils. So, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. I mean, sinister. Well, mean sinister. Well, mean left-handed, isn't it? So, yeah. Instead of going to the right, they're going to the left. I mean, there, there are. I think it's one in. About one in a million, something like. Let's just say one in a million, but it's a hell of a lot. Uh, Left-handed snails, sinister snails, born uh -huh. out of, you know, random batches. There was one here a few years ago. I can't remember its name. It actually had a name, and it was on the news. Uh, and they got it in a lab, and it, it, it was a sinister snail. And they asked on the national news on the BBC if anybody else had. A sinistral, straight, uh, a sinistral snail mates for it, so they uh -huh. can match them up and and see if they got uh, left-handed babies. I'm going to say left-handed because every time I say sinistral, I trip over my own tongue. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> okay. It's actually on the BBC asking for if anybody had or anybody finds a left-handed snail, let them know. So that's how that's how rare they are. Yeah, incredibly, and the, and that's that's all the more reason that made the Rocky Mountain snails so interesting is because they are all naturally left-handed. So fascinating. I'll I'll copy you. I'll go with you with the left-handed. Yeah, it's easy to say, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Sinistral is pretty. It, it and it also kind of for me. Um, and I also read this about the word that it actually stems directly from. Uh, I believe ancient Romans, or no, it yeah, was Greek. Latin. Yeah, it's Latin. Is it? Is it Latin? Uh, ah, darn it! I should have known that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it stems directly from Latin, in which uh, sinister or you know sinister means you know to be yeah. off, left-handed. Left-handed like me was sinister. Uh, you mm -hmm. know the start. Uh, that's what they thought, and that's why witches were burnt because of black dandy and things like that. Yep, it's all absolutely. Crazy. Pretty interesting, yeah, interesting stuff, there. man. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> things you can carry on with. I mean, I, I try to think what else now you may have missed. Uh, I think I think you got it all pretty covered. I mean, it's, you could go on for days about snails. Just oh, from, right. Like, I had to skip over a bit of my stuff. <laughs> I, I, I probably messed a lot of it up, haven't I? Because I'm actually reading it here. Um, so when you've got when you ask me questions, I'll probably mess some of yours up. But you're like, oh, I've got this plan, and I chops it half of it. <laughs> it's not worth going over it again now. But yeah, so I can understand that. But yeah, there is uh, you. You could go on for absolute days about snails. Yeah. Unlike 
lot of other invertebrate scales have so many different types uh, yeah styles, adaptations that you know and there's scales and treetops there's scales on the ground there's scales oh yeah scales in fresh water that that Oof, just mind blowing. You could you could do an entire two or three hour program just on snails. Oh, people, absolutely. The, absolutely. The aquariums, you mm -hmm. know. And it's I, I like there's, there's there's so many African land snails. That's one of the other things that are really annoying is when people say African land snail, they think it's one type of snail. I mean Oh no, well, it's so hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. It's like, the, the name itself tells you it's African and it, it lives on the land, but it's a snail. Yeah. So they're all African land snails, basically. So, you know, yeah. big snail. And, big. And, and this is why I've got this confusion now. I've got on my desk, I've got four different species here on my desk. And I don't know where any of them are until they grow up. Until, sure. until they're out, I'm not going to. And then it's very close without dissecting them which I'm not going to do, obviously. Um, no, yeah. They're your pets. You don't want to do that. No. I don't buy pets. And those pets. <laughs> yeah, they're not worth the risk. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not worth the beating. You know, you've got to live, how many eggs, uh, you know, it's just so much about it. I could, I could waffle on all night about it, so I better shut up. Uh, no, you're fine. I mean, I honestly, I really enjoyed learning about them. Uh, I, the more I learned about them, the more I did research, the more I was like, wait a minute, these guys are really, really cool. This is going to be a fun episode for sure, because snails are definitely really unique and just fascinating creatures. Um, and the fact that they've been around for 500 million some odd years, like that's very impressive. So um yeah go get you some snail anti-aging stuff um, recently they found uh, i think it was either this year or last year they uh -huh. found a 99 million year old snail fossil in amber uh and normally they only uh, get the shell right this one has the, the full thing that you can, wow. you can make it out in the, in the app which is which is awesome that was that was either this year or last year i think Quite in, in Myanmar, I think it was Myanmar. There's lots of places Maybe. that's closed off, you know, like for instance, like North Korea. If you take yeah. North Korea, I wonder how many things are in North Korea that we don't know about. Oh, same with uh, yeah, yeah so Thailand and Myanmar, like you were saying. Uh, they're discovering new species of tarantulas there all the time, like it's it's yeah. pretty fascinating, so. Absolutely. Okay, well, I yeah. think uh, we'll have to we'll have to delve back into the world of snails for another episode uh, sometime in the future. But I think we've come across our shameless plug moment at the end of our episode. Simon, do you have any shameless plugs this week? Anything new going on? Buy my book on snails. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I, I definitely think that would be a good idea. Well, you know what, if you have a link for it, we can put the link down in the description of this video once we post it and it's up and live, which um, will be as soon as the stream is over, but it'll be ready. But yeah, buy Simon's book on snails. That would be amazing. Then you'll get a whole lot more information about snails, a lot more than what we could cover in this short hour. Yeah. Anything else? No. Same as always. Come back, subscribe <laughs> to this channel, and uh, if you want to see us talk about other things, make a suggestion in the comments below. Uh, give it a sub. Watch out for any shots we pop up. And we'll let you know what's going on next week, which is scorpions. We're going to talk about scorpions, which they are in the family of arachnids. So definitely something that I love, obviously. But um, I don't know a ton about scorpions, so I'm excited. I get to learn 
more about scorpions as well. So yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments, absolutely put them down below. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run with my shameless plug super quick. I uh, found, I finally got our podcast. Um, we call it a podcast, but really we're kind of a live stream. But now we are finally an official podcast. You can find us uh, on pretty much all of the audio streaming services. So Spotify, um, iHeartRadio is one here in the States. I don't know if that's over in the UK, but you can find us on that. Um, RSS platforms, pretty much anywhere you find your podcast, you can find us. So if you don't have a chance to watch us live on this channel here, Oh, thank you, Liliana. If you don't have a chance to watch us live on our stream, that is totally okay. You can find us in podcast and audio form on a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I'll have to find out exactly which ones they are, and I'll let you guys know that. Um, but otherwise, that's fantastic, and I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, and I think, so yeah, next week we're going to be talking about scorpions. And I've got a couple of special guests coming up as well. Uh, a couple that are, are one that is local here to me in the States, um, to Colorado. So we're going to have Eight-Legged Adventures as a guest. And we're going to interview them um, on the 2nd of December. So you don't want to miss that. And then we're also going to have uh, Fatty Pancake uh, <laughs> as a guest. I believe on the 25th of November, so this month. Um, and so we're, we're definitely looking forward to having those two special guests. And I hope you guys can join us and bring a couple of your own extra questions for them. Uh, because they are excited to be on our show. But that's all I've got. So I guess it's bye-bye. <laughs> Thank wow. you, Simon. As always, thank you so much for being with us and talking about snails with me and joining me on this learning adventure. I appreciate it. And we will see you guys next week at the same time, same place. I say welcome.